I'm pretty sure you can't weld 7075 without cracking. I've heard of a special welding wire that can weld it, though. Who told you you can't weld 7075? I've never had to weld 7075, so honestly, I have no idea, but I'm going to throw everything at it in this video that I can to see what works and what doesn't. Okay, first test, simple butt weld with no filler rod. Let's see how bad this cracks. Tack welds holding fairly strong. Split right down the center, just like 6061 does. So immediately, that has me curious why the tack weld held so good, but the weld itself didn't. Attack weld's pretty strong again. It's not cracking. Okay, so what I'm going to try this time is just being real patient with it and just spot weld in the whole seam and see if I can get it to not crack. Okay, that third one cracked again. I'm gonna try to hit it faster and hotter and chop the amperage off really quick. Okay, so that worked good. Pretty strong. Try that approach here. Okay, that's inter that's interesting. This one cracked and then it also put the crack back into the first one. The one before it. So now these two pieces are really hot, so that's probably a factor too. So in this video, the reason I was gonna use this Dynasty is because it's a lot quieter than the Prime Welds, but this dang thing is giving me arc start problems. This Prime Weld TIG starts up a lot crisper than the Miller. And I've screwed and adjusted the points and cleaned them on this too. It's just for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just old or what, but this one's a lot better for arc starts. And some of you guys have made a poor assumption and commented that you think I'm using the Miller's because I'm using a Miller torch. I have Miller torches on both of these machines because this is by far my favorite torch to use. But if you're ever curious and I don't say which welder I'm using, you can listen to the background noise. This one's cooling fans are a lot louder, so that's the machine I'm gonna be using from here on out. And I honestly really am happy with this machine. And if you decide you want any prime old machine, you can use the code 6061 to save a few bucks and help me out to keep making these videos. Now I'm going to try it with my filler rod of choice.
pretty dirty look and I'll have to do some research. One guy commented that he said that it has this 7075 has copper in it, but I don't know if that's true or not. I'll look into that later. Do a bend test on it. You hear that? Heard some crackles coming out of it. Yeah, that wasn't strong at all. Fractured right between the weld puddle and the parent metal. You can see down the center of the weld joint stuck together because that's just mostly the filler rod. Now I'm gonna try the filler rod that I don't ever use on any of my projects. All those black speckles are just because I didn't clean this part good enough. I cleaned this one better and it was fine. And test number two. Pretty much the exact same results. Then just out of curiosity, I'm gonna bend test both of these. This one was the one that was welded and maybe heat affected. And this one I just got off the bandsaw. And for you keyboard safety warriors that criticize me for wearing gloves on a bandsaw, I do it for a reason. I know exactly where I can and can put my hands. I know it might be dangerous to get it sucked in, but I don't want a finger nipped off either. And when you're sawing thick parts like this, they get hot, they get pretty warm. So, you know, if you're sawing along with a bare hand, and it gets hot, you don't want to instinctively you release your grip, so that's a safety hazard too. If you're wearing gloves, you can grip that part a whole lot tighter without worrying about getting burned. I digress. This one's the one off of the fresh off the saw. Pretty brittle stuff. See how that fractured? Okay, this one's the one that has been affected by the welding heat. That one's more ductile. Which is kind of interesting. Weld and it made it brittle right along the weld joint, but not as brittle as a part that hasn't been welded on. Now I'm going to try to use these thin strips of 7075 as filler rods, see what that does. Pretty sure I already know the outcome of this though, but worth trying. If you're a beginner and you still suck at your tack welds, really good cheap practice is just weld and filler rod together. Just cut it up and try tacking it together. Weld bead appearance is nice and shiny. 7075 filler rod bend test. Same results. It's probably about time I make a filler rod organizer. If you, if you want to see a real cool one, check out Ron Covell's channel. I'll leave a link below to the rod holder that he made a long time ago. 49, 43 rod. Three thousand and three series aluminum sheet. Aluma weld rod, the only rod that's not actually welding. Brilliant sales tactic on that name. Hey, this is my first time ever using this stuff, so the idea is you don't liquefy your base metals. You just try to heat them up hot enough that this liquefies and goes on top of it. Like I said, first try, I clearly suck at it. I need more practice, but got it a little bit better that one. Let's see how strong those are. Luma weld bend test. Well, I'll be damned. That's the best one so far. attempt for me and I'm calling it quits. Let's see if maybe this these thicker parts have enough 
thermal conductivity to pull away from the weld joint and not have it crack, kind of like those first tack welds did. Decent crack forming right in the middle of the rod. Pretty sloppy looking cold weld. I was trying to get after it as fast as I could. No visible cracks in it though. But like all T welds, if you bend it this way, it's way more susceptible to cracks. I'm gonna beat the piss out of it the hard way first and see how it goes. This is a four pound sledge, I'm not going easy on it. Okay, that bit in pretty good. more heat. So the only one that fused in somewhat decent was this bigger one where I welded it quick and tried to keep the heat down. For whatever reason, you know, like this one, I tried welding this one exactly how I would 6061 to get it to wet in really nice and take my time. But that just seems like a no-no with 7075. So the moral of this story for me at least is if anybody wants me to weld any 7075, I'm not taking on that job. I'm just saying heck no, I don't want any liability or any rework. I'm just gonna go do what I know that I'm good at. This chunk of flat bar cost me about 30 bucks and I'm just gonna chuck it all because I don't want to mix any of this up with my 6061. So if you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up and then a comment below or subscribe and ring the bell if you wanna watch more videos like these. Thanks for watching.